Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at the SH Figure Arts Mighty Morphin Power Rangers White Ranger. Or I guess it's not Mighty Morphin Power Rangers if you want to go from like the Japanese version, but we're going to go with Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And this is the unhelmeted version, as you can tell, and as you probably saw with the red and green rangers of the same variety, it's, uh, it's not necessarily the most necessary purchase. But that's okay, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at it anyway. So let's go ahead and get this guy off the stand and take a closer look. And this guy stands just about 14 and a half centimeters, which is gonna make him pretty close to, now let's say five and three quarters, it's a little bit less than that, maybe five and five eighths, right around there. So you have a, a general idea. And if you wanna check out the other Power Rangers from SH Figure Arts, I do have a playlist for all of my smaller scale import figures. You can check that out and watch to your heart's content. There's tons of videos on there. And then we've also reviewed the uh, Power Rangers Legacy line from Bandai America. If you wanna check that out, that would be... Just search for the channel. I don't know which playlist those would be in. And if you're into ratings, you guys should probably know by now that I have incorporated a rating system at the end of each review so that you will have a final verdict for every figure I review. And I'm also gonna go ahead and stick some ratings in throughout for things like the articulation and the overall aesthetic. And probably the accessories too, just because you guys seem to love ratings and who am I to not give you what you want? So let's go ahead and dive into this guy. The overall aesthetic on this guy, it's basically the same as before. It's basically the same figure. As far as I can tell, it is the same figure in terms of production spec. Uh, the only real difference I can tell, and this is like I said, not probably purposeful, is that the uh, color for the arms and legs, which is a different plastic than parts of the torso, it looks like it might be ever so slightly less white, slightly more off-white. You can maybe tell on the upper arms, it may not even show up on camera just because of the, the pearlescent, iridescent nature of this paint job. It's hardly worth mentioning, but it is worth mentioning just a tiny bit that you might notice a little bit more of an off-white effect on the legs. Otherwise, it looks identical to the original figure. So if you have that one and you're like, eh, I don't really care about the unhelmeted head, you don't have to worry. You don't need to get this. There's nothing noticeably changed. Okay, and then obviously we do have the new head, so we're gonna talk about that. And I don't like it. It's not absolutely terrible. If you don't look at it real close and kind of blur your eyes, it looks all right. It is obviously a different head than the one from the Green Ranger because the hair is different. It still has the dot matrix paint job, which as you can tell right now, it's probably not super noticeable even on camera. So unless you get pretty close, it, it, it accomplishes its task well enough in looking like actual shading, but it is speckly if you get too close and it's kind of a, a poofy face sculpt. It's almost as if they said, hey, really quick, make a, make a face sculpt that looks kind of like him. We don't really care how close it is. Just get it good enough so we can make some more money. And that's that's about what this is. So the overall aesthetic on this guy, I'm gonna give it, eh, let's give it a seven out of 10, just because the head sculpt is not impressive. And that's really the only selling point for this new release, unless you just didn't get the old release. So that's, that's about that. The paint job is pretty clean, nothing really worth mentioning because there's not that much paint on here. All right, let's go ahead and move into the accessories. Obviously we do have the two heads, the unhelmeted head and the helmeted head. The helmet is as crispy as ever. It's a very clean paint job, so that's nice. We have a total of six different hands, two fists, hands, uh, one gripping hand for Saba, one style pose hand, and then two different gripping hands for holding his helmet, which they're kind of a pain in the ass to use, but they do get the job done well enough. And then lastly, we have Saba with two interchangeable blade pieces, one where it's retracted and one where it is extended, and Saba does look awesome. The paint job is great. So for accessories, it only gets a six out of 10 for me because it's a, it's a very minimal batch of accessories. It's enough, but it's not impressive by any means. It's just good enough. All right, so let's go ahead and go through the articulation on this guy, which is the exact same as before. So we're gonna go kind of quickly, pop the head off so you can see. We have a little ball hinge up here, which is never ideal, but it'll, it'll be good enough. It's kind of a hassle. You can't really use the hinge part without popping the head off. So that kind of sucks, but the ball peg will be good enough for most posing. And then you have a ball peg for the neck as well. So you might be able to just ignore that hinge altogether. For the shoulder pads, they do have a hinge, which is good, but it's not great. Because when you bring the arm forward, the hinging, it, it's like I said, it's good enough, 
but if you need to bring it really forward, you're gonna have to kind of just separate the shoulder pad from the body and it doesn't look great. There's not really a good way they could have handled that other than maybe just making it flexible so it kind of just kind of morphed as you raise the arm up, but it'll get the job done well enough. You have a ball peg connecting the shoulder to the torso and then just a floating cap to hide that, so that's fine, pretty much standard. You have your hinge on the end of that ball peg, which works wonderfully, way better than horizontal range. And of course you have your full rotation and, and you have a bicep swivel out of that as well. So shoulder range is really good, I like it. Shoulder pads, you know, give or take, could be better, could be worse, but it's, it's okay. Double jointed elbow, works fine, no problems, not ugly. Little tiny ball hinge for the wrist, definitely good enough. Not wonderful, but it's one of the better examples we've seen of a ball hinge wrist not being gappy but still having good range. Now we come to the torso where it's somewhat problematic. There's a ball peg in here and there's a ball peg down here and using them together you can get some posability, but leaning them forward's pretty much not gonna happen. Leaning them back works a little bit better. Side to side, it's okay. And then rotation is good enough. You can't rotate much up here. Down here you can and it stretches out the floaty belt, so it's okay, but it's not especially good. This will rotate to get out of the way. It also pops off probably more easily than it should, but uh, it, it, it's, eh, it's acceptable, I guess. You have a hinge ball peg down here, so you can drop the hips down if you want to. Give yourself a little bit of extra range, and that does afford for pretty good range. It does kick the leg out to the side, no pun intended, but it's, it's okay. I mean, it, you get really good range out of that. They do go backwards a little bit. You can pretty much do the splits if you want to do a nice couple of kicks or something, that'd be fine. And you have your thigh swivel built in. Not the best looking hip system, but fairly functional. For the knees, not bad looking and really good range, that's awesome. And then for the ankle, we have a ball hinge, which gives you decent range going back. Not great range going forward. Even if you try to force it over, you just can't really get the legs to go forward, which is a huge detraction for me, or get the feet to go forward, I'm sorry. Uh, it's, it's just not good. I hate it when ankles can't go forward. And don't give me the argument that people in real life can't bring their foot forward that far. Ones that are martial artists can, first of all, and second of all, they these aren't real people. You can't pose it if you can't bring the foot forward at all. Toe joints don't work well enough. Even decent ones like this, it's very much difficult to pose a figure on just a toe joint. You need to bring the foot forward a little bit more than not at all. So articulation on this guy is, is kind of a letdown. I would give it probably only a six out of 10 just because some of it works fine, no problem at all. But others which are kind of more important for posing like the ankles, really kind of a hindrance. And then the torso is pretty much limited as well. So not the best over overall situation for posability. So overall thoughts, I think it's not bad. I mean, it's not a great release by any means. The original one wasn't either. They're good enough. They're not bad. They're not highly impressive, but as I've said a few times now, they will get the job done. So if you do have the original release, you might be okay just sticking with it. You probably don't need to grab this new one unless you really want a new head, which isn't that good, and accessories which aren't especially impressive. It's just nothing great. It's just okay. If you don't have the old one, go ahead and grab it. You're not gonna be upset. And watch this, if you pop the helmet on, nobody will know the difference. Everybody will be like, wow, you have the original release and you can lie because you're a dirty liar and you will have the same thing as everyone else if you want the original release. That's okay. So yeah, that's about it. I guess it looks like maybe the gold on the chest is a little bit more yellow. Maybe? Kind of hard to say. It could just be the lighting. Yeah, they're close enough that nobody would know the difference without comparing the two. So, all right guys, final verdict is, uh, I'm gonna say six and a half out of 10 for this new release, just because the head kind of sucks and otherwise the figure is the same and not impressive. So that'll do it guys, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, do give it a thumbs up. It really does help me out a whole bunch and I really appreciate it too. And uh, you might wanna subscribe because I have new videos up as often as I can do it. It's, it's almost every single day. It has been for like four years, but lately we haven't had enough stuff to review, so it's been a little bit less than that. But if you don't see a new review in the morning, you can check out my other reviews. I've got over 3,000 of them, probably closer to 4,000 now. So there's most likely something you haven't seen that would be helpful to you. So go ahead and just look through the channel and I'm sure you'll find something to watch while you're doing your morning business, if you know what I mean. So go ahead and do all of that good stuff, guys. Give the video a thumbs up and in the meantime, keep collecting.